As of now, we only really spoke about one type of electric circuit known as a DC circuit. So inside a DC circuit, the electric current is always constant. It's steady and that means it does not depend on time. On the other hand, RC circuits contain an electric current that does depend on time. In fact, as we'll see in just a moment, inside a RC circuit, the electric current decreases over time. So let's begin by looking at an example of an RC circuit. So this is one example of an RC circuit and we see an RC circuit essentially contains a combination of resistors and capacitors and that's why we call it an RC circuit. So RC stands for resistor capacitor. So we have one resistor and one capacitor connected in series as shown. And we also have a voltage difference. We have a battery that creates a voltage difference. So let's begin our examination of RC circuits by discussing the electric current found inside our RC circuit. So let's suppose we have the following open circuit. So because this switch is open, that basically means no electric current will flow. Now at the instant we close our switch, electrons will begin to flow from the negative end of our battery in the following direction and those electrons will collect on one of the plates of our capacitor. Now, as a result of that collection of electrons on this plate, that collection of electrons will repel the electrons found on this plate and those electrons will be forced to flow in the following direction through our resistor with resistance given by R and into the following plate of our battery. So let's discuss Kirchhoff's second rule. So let's try to use Kirchhoff's second rule to determine the electromotive force found on our battery. So the electromotive force is always given by the same symbol given by this letter. So let's begin at this position and let's examine the flow of our positive charge as it flows in this direction through the resistor, through our capacitor, and through the voltage and back to this position. So we're applying Kirchhoff's second rule. So according to Kirchhoff's second rule, the sum of the change in potential as our positive charge flows through a closed loop as shown is always equal to zero. So we have negative I multiplied by R where R is the resistance on the resistor. Q is our quantity of charge that collects on the capacitor. C is the capacitance of our capacitor and this is the electromotive force found on our battery. It's the voltage difference found on the battery and this sum is equal to zero. So, now let's take this equation, rearrange it, and solve for the electromotive force. The electromotive force given by the symbol is equal to the sum Q divided by C plus I multiplied by R. So, let's call this equation 1. So, let's try to answer the following question about our RC circuit. So, what exactly is the voltage difference across our capacitor within an RC circuit with respect to time? So, we essentially want to derive an equation between the voltage across our capacitor and time. So let's begin by recalling what the definition is of our electric current. So electric current is given by the rate of change of our quantity of charge given by Q. So the instantaneous current I is equal to dQ divided by dT. Now notice in the following equation R is a constant. We know our electromotive force is also constant and the C, the capacitance, is also constant. So our R, our uh, EMF, and our C are all constants, but Q and I actually vary with respect to time. 
So let's take equation one and let's represent I in terms of Q. So we see our electromotive force is equal to Q divided by C plus dq divided by dt multiplied by r. So now let's multiply both sides by c and then let's bring the q to the left side of our equation and we get this result. So we have our emf multiplied by the capacitance minus q is equal to dq dt multiplied by r. So now let's bring the t's to one side and the q's to the other side and we get the following result. dt divided by r multiplied by c is equal to dq divided by our emfc uh, minus our q. So now we want to integrate both of these sides. So we integrate from time equals zero seconds when the charge on our capacitor Q is equal to zero to the time T when our charge on the capacitor is equal to Q. So we integrate this side from zero to T and this side from zero to Q. Now, if we actually solve these integrals, we get the following result. So t divided by rc from 0 to t is equal to negative natural log of our emfc minus q from 0 to q. So if we evaluate these integrals, we get the following result. t divided by rc is equal to negative natural log of our emfc minus q plus natural log of our emf multiplied by c. So let's multiply both sides by negative and let's use our laws of logs to combine these natural logs and we get the following result. The natural log of 1 minus q divided by our emf multiplied by the capacitance is equal to negative t divided by rc. So let's take the exponential of both of these sides. So when we take the exponential of this side, our natural log disappears and we're left with 1 minus q divided by uh, emf multiplied by c and this becomes e raised to the power of negative t divided by rc. Now, let's actually rearrange and solve for our q. So Q is the quantity of charge found on our capacitor. So we found the equation for the electric charge that accumulates on the capacitor with respect to time. So Q is equal to our EMF multiplied by the capacitance multiplied by 1 minus E raised to the power of negative T divided by RC. So once again, this gives us the charge that accumulates on our capacitor with respect to time. Now, let's recall the relationship between the voltage across a capacitor and the quantity of charge on that capacitor. So the quantity of charge Q is equal to the product of the capacitance of our capacitor and the voltage across our capacitor. So if we replace our Q with C multiplied by VC, we see that C appears on the right side and the left side. So if we cancel those C, Cs out, we see that the voltage on the capacitor at any given moment in time is equal to the following equation. So our EMF of the battery multiplied by 1 minus E to the negative T divided by RC. So this gives us the voltage difference across our capacitor with respect to time within an RC circuit. So if we actually plot this on the XY axis, we get the following curve. So this is our voltage on our capacitor, this is our time. So we see as the time increases, our voltage across our capacitor approaches the voltage found on the battery. So this is the highest possible value for the voltage across our capacitor. So we see that as time approaches infinity, this quantity approaches zero and our VC approaches our EMF. 
So once again, after some time passes, after a great amount of time passes, the voltage found on our capacitor is equal to the voltage across our battery. Now, let's go back for a moment to the following equation that gives us the quantity of electric charge that collects on our capacitor with respect to time. So let's take the right side of our equation and let's actually distribute this term to these two terms. So we get the following result. Now let's take our derivative of this equation with respect to time. So the left side becomes dq divided by dt and that is simply equal to our electric current, our instantaneous electric current. So dq divided by dt is equal to i. Now the right side of our equation becomes, so we take the derivative of this term and this term with respect to time. This becomes zero and this becomes positive voltage across the battery divided by resistance on the resistor multiplied by E to the power of negative T divided by RC. Now, if we take this equation and plot it on the xy axis, we get the following result. So our y axis is our electric current i and the x axis is the time. So we see as the time increases, our quantity of electric current within our RC circuit decreases and it does so exponentially. So if we look at the following equation, at an initial time of t equals zero seconds, this term becomes one and we see that I is equal to our electromotive force on the battery divided by R. So initially, this is the electric current found in our RC circuit. However, as time increases, as time approaches infinity, this quantity approaches zero and our electric current also approaches zero. And that can be seen by the following graph. So because of this equation and this graph and because of this equation and this graph, we can conclude the following statement about any RC circuit. So within an RC circuit at an initial time of t equals zero seconds, the electric current is at a maximum given by this value while the voltage across the capacitor is zero. And that can be seen from the following equation initially, the voltage, if t is equal to zero, will be zero because one minus one will give us zero. However, as the time increases, as it approaches infinity, the voltage on the capacitor increases and eventually at an infinitely large time, our voltage across the capacitor will equal to the voltage across the battery. And at the same time, as our time increases, the electric current within our electric circuit also decreases exponentially. Now at a time equaling infinity, the electric current within our RC circuit will be zero because the capacitor will have the same voltage as our battery and there will be no electric potential difference, no voltage difference within our electric circuit.